All right, guys, this month actually marks one year since we released our LEGO Modular Airport series, and it's been met with wide fanfare. Not only is it one of our favorite builds, but it also seems like it's one of your guys' favorite builds as well. Since last year, we have released numerous other airport builds, including smaller airports you can add to a smaller city, even one that fits on a small IKEA lemon table. But the massive airport series is still our favorite airport. Now, as you guys know, for a while we were limited on space, so we could only build a small component of the airport, which was just one gate and a small seating area. Luckily, with our new place, since we've moved, we've been able to expand the airport and add many more details. While it's still not the full airport build that we dreamed to do one day, we're extremely excited with how it's turning out, and we have some cool things planned for the future as well. So today, let's dive in and let me show you guys what we have built. Starting with the terminal, you may have noticed we now have six gates. If you only see three, that's because we built ground gates towards the north end, and I'll cover more on that in a minute. For the standard gates, we built three of them, and we use our latest gate design, which features the glass walkway for more of a modern airport touch. Our first gate featured more of a corrugated exterior, which is common with older airports, but for this build in particular, we wanted to go with the glass modern look. Just like our other gate designs, which are fully detachable, adjustable, and accessible uh, with the roof coming off, these also feature the same capabilities, it's just a different aesthetic, but they also attach to the airport very easily. The gates connect to the main terminal building, which if you haven't seen our first airport video, all of the terminal sections are completely modular, which is a super cool feature of this build. Not only are the sections modular, but the base and tops are also modular to give you full access to every floor and every interior detail. Each section snaps together with Technic pins and the roofs attach just like real Lego modular sets, with a combination of plates and tiles to allow for easy access. What we love about this method in particular is that it has allowed us to grow the airport as we got more space, which is exactly what we initially intended to do with the design. The design allows you to make the airport as large or as small as you'd like to fit your LEGO city needs. So someday we hope to keep expanding the airport and build the entire thing once we either move again or maybe relocate the city to a bigger room if Miss AFL TV allows it. So what about the interior? Well, that's what we took so long to put together in the past few weeks and why we haven't posted any videos about it since. We added interior detail to the entire thing in every single section. It took a while, but honestly, it took the most time just waiting for the Brickling quarters. In the old video, we showed you guys how the interiors laid out, including gate areas and seating areas, as well as movable walkways and other airport details. And we were sure to carry those over into this build as well. We wanted to make the airport as realistic as possible, so we made sure to add as much detail as possible. Each gate section has a boarding door, a ticket scanner, as well as a security touchpad to keep the airport secure. Additional sections, which we couldn't fit in our city yet, but are available on our website, include a check-in area, a baggage claim area, airport security checkpoint, flight displays, seating areas, ticketing kiosks, and even more. We add new stuff all the time. Which leads me back to the exterior. There's so much new exterior work added, and I'm excited to show you guys around. We have new vehicles like the baggage loader, which we just added, as well as older vehicles we released last year, like the baggage tug, and we've also designed some other ones on our website. We also added our new airport lights, which we just released last month, as well as indicator lights on the roof and fence, and we added a new tarmac area with signage details and ground markings. You'll note these white areas will be stickered over soon with runway markings, but we love how it's turning out. Unfortunately, with the constraints of this room, we didn't have space for a full runway, but we were able to add gate areas, a vehicle road for airport traffic, the start of the taxiway. If we had more space, this would be fully built out and we would, it would basically lead to a runway, which would be on the left-hand side. Unfortunately, we don't have the space right now, but we plan to add it down the road. We also added ground gates to the north end, intended for smaller planes and regional or spillover flights that use smaller planes that can be docked on the ground. There are three ground gates total, and there are elevators in the terminal which bring passengers up and down. We continued the lighting on this side as well to tie everything together. Adjacent to this area is one of my favorite areas, which is the airport access gate for deliveries, as well as access for emergency crews. 
The idea is to have a three-way security design with gate arm, retractable vehicle blocks, and a swivel gate um, that's attached to the wall. On top of that, police stand guard to make sure nothing gets in that shouldn't be there. The other reason why we created this was for emergency vehicle access. We came out with an airport version of our Lego fire ladder truck, and we feel it's really cool to build a firehouse on the side where trucks can easily access the airport in case there was an emergency. So in the future, we definitely plan to build one over here. Speaking of this side, you'll also notice that we added a road leading to the airport with airport signage in the back. And you'll notice we've also built our old monorail from our previous city. It was nice to find a home for it because we weren't really sure where we were gonna put it in the new city. And the thought is that it would bring passengers from a parking structure right over to the terminal. And the monorail design, of course, isn't ours, um, but we did design the track. We then added some greenery, like the pine trees, which we did a free tutorial on two weeks ago. I'll link it up above. In the back, we are planning to add a control tower. We think it would be super cool to build it in the back here and have the monorail go around it, but more on that in the future. The absolute best part about this airport design is that it's completely adjustable and you can add or remove sections as your city grows and evolves. For us, this has been instrumental and a huge benefit as we recently moved and we've been able to change and upgrade the layout from time to time. Keep in mind, almost everything you've seen in this entire video today can be added to your city. We offer instructions on our website, www.aflstore.com, and the instructions come with parts files for the exact parts and pieces you'll need for this build or anything you saw in the video. Unfortunately, we can't really give an estimate on part cost as it's completely different for everybody, and it also depends on how many sections of the airport you end up adding. But again, our instructions come with the parts files, so it's extremely easy to order the exact parts and pieces you'll need for the build. Again, it is a part intensive build, so if you wanna see how to save money on Lego, we did do a full video which you can watch here, or if you wanna see our older airport video, you can watch that here. Thanks again for watching today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you aren't already, and we'll see you next time.